my final live cooking for the winter season uh, my my followers I keep saying repeatable eatable and my followers kept uh, leaving comments and messaging me and saying oh I love repeatable eatable so I'm calling this segment on my YouTube channel repeatable eatable what the heck does that mean well for me it means food is so delicious you can't wait to eat it more than two or even three times in a week because I believe in meal prep. I actually live by meal prep. And I have this philosophy that when you eat, food should always be like a party in your mouth. So that means it needs to be flavorful. It needs to look really good to the eye. Um, it needs to be appealing. I and mean, it should smell so yummy. So good. like, I cannot wait to dig in. Um, I get pumped about food. I, get, I eat, I love eating food um, for the past two years. I, I lost, released, and maintained a 40 pound weight loss. And for women over 50, that can be kind of challenging and hard. And so I started uh, cooking for myself was one of the things that I just transformed and made a commitment that I would cook delicious, nourishing food for my soul. It's really a form of self-care, self-care love, which is what I believe in self-care love. It's a demonstration of me not giving my absolute best and all my energy to like my career and my job when I'm not willing to pour that into myself. As a designer, I'm also a home interior designer. I have this, I have a bunch of sayings and one of them is, you better treat yourself better than company. Now, that means, you know, don't wait to keep your home fixed up when people come by. Same thing with good food. You know how it is. We have company, family, whatever coming over. Most times we're gonna make something a little special, a little more effort. Hey, put some of that energy into you. Pour that into you. Um, I'm so happy for those of you who are joining me live. But again, this live video will be a video after it's finished. So let's jump in. I have several awesome dishes that I'm making. I do have to confess, I on my pre-videos that I put out on my social media, I said I was making a broccoli, excuse me, a Brussels sprouts dish. Well, I'm not making that dish till next week. I was ahead. But listen. I have some awesome, awesome dishes. Even if you are like, well, I'm not going to make those dishes, but it'll give you inspiration so you can think of ways that you can make really delicious stuff, food for yourself. Now, I'm a multi-hyphenate eater. That means that I eat vegetarian, every now and again, pescatarian, vegan, and always gluten-free. I've been gluten-free for two years, and um, it has really changed my life. Uh, I have so much information. I'll, I'll make another video all about that. So today... I'm going to be starting with a smoky mashed potato casserole with crispy potato skins on top. Totally delicious. It has some cheese in it too. Everything with cheese in it is delicious. So this dish is vegetarian. The next dish I'll make is a roasted broccoli with lemon pepper. That is a vegan dish. I'm making a jerk jackfruit. That's a vegan dish. And then I'm making a white bean, a spicy white bean dip. And that's a vegan dish. So. You could really alter any of these. You could add chicken or something if you wanted to to the mashed potatoes to if you eat that kind of food. So I'm gonna start off with my mashed potatoes uh, casserole. I've already whipped up my mashed potatoes ahead for the most part. Hey, what's up, Catherine? Oh gosh, thanks for joining me two weeks in a, while, in a row. Um, so this is a mashed potato casserole dish and I'm gonna cook this in a cast iron skillet. This is my oldest cast iron skillet and I dropped it and I broke the handle. And you know, I, I didn't throw this away. Some people might've thought, oh, my handle is broke. Child, please. This is the most seasoned cast iron skillet that I have. And so I do things like gluten-free cornbread in here or casseroles and you could, you could do anything. Do not throw a cast iron skillet away. I do not care what happens, okay? So you're going to take, I'm going to actually share the, um, the, the recipes in the comments. So I'm gonna move a little quicker. Whoops, because today is not a, a move along. A move along. Today is not a cook along. So I have a lot of things already pre-prepped. And for those of you who are like, well, I wanted to follow along, you can still watch the video afterwards after I put the recipes up, and then you can make your own exactly or your own version. So this is, um, Bake. It's really twice baked because I did not boil these potatoes. These potatoes were baked in the oven first and I used uh, Yukon yellow gold potatoes because they just have a creamier, yummy, delicious texture. So you know where after that uh, food should be a party in your mouth kind of a situation. So next up, 
I am going to add, oh, here we go. I'm going to add some rosemary and some thyme. Rosemary, for those of you who've never seen fresh rosemary, this is how it comes. You just pull it off the stalk and get these nice little, little uh, leaves here. So I'm going to chop up some rosemary and some thyme. And you just do a quick, quick rough chop here. Making a mashed potatoes or a mashed potato casserole out of baked potatoes is gonna give you a really delicious, rich flavor because a lot of that flavor for a mashed potato can come, or for, for potatoes in general, can come from the skin. All right, so I'm gonna add in my rosemary. I'm gonna add in my thyme. And again, this is fresh thyme. For those of you who've never seen a sprig of fresh thyme, Gonna drop, drop that in there. Rosemary and thyme are so, so yummy. They just give a punch of a savoriness to any dish you add them to. And sometimes you would think, well, if you add that to every food, won't it taste the same? No, because whatever, like mix, mixing it with the, the flavor and texture of a broccoli is gonna be different than putting it in like mashed potatoes. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm mincing up two whole cloves of garlic, just doing a chop, a, a, a rough mince on the garlic. Get that garlic minced up there, drop it in. And then I'm going to add half a teaspoon of salt. Gotta have salt, y'all. I try not to use a ton of salt, but salt makes everything taste even better. Half a teaspoon of pepper, let me get my actual half a teaspoon. I'm using a whole teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of pepper. Put that right, put that right in. And also a half to a teaspoon of liquid smoke. A lot of times vegetarian and vegan, you know, for me, I'll speak for myself. I'm not always looking to replace a meat product, but I do sometimes want some of that deep savoriness, or we might say umami, where it just has a different feel in the mouth. And so a liquid smoke can do that for you. Also Worcestershire sauce, um, make sure stuff is gluten-free if you're gluten-free. So for this, I'm adding an apple liquid smoke. I have so many varieties of liquid smoke. This one is hickory, I have mesquite. Liquid smoke is uh, just a real, real gem to cook with. So I'm gonna add a teaspoon of this. This is the pecan flavor liquid smoke into our smoky twice baked mashed potatoes and i'm going to just blend this very quickly and then we're going to add our cheeses how y'all doing today let me know in the comment section i don't care if you're watching live or if you watch this after the fact how are you doing on this sunday morning it is okay that's good it's freezing here on the east coast where i am i mean it is super super cold but it is winter, right? Like what, what, should, what should you expect? So next up, I have some cream cheese and sour cream that you're going to add. You're gonna add about a half a cup of cream cheese and half of a cubed, uh, a bag of cubed cream cheese. Hey, 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 Beverly, sour cream. I hope I didn't mix those up, but again, the recipe will be in the uh, comment section. So you're going to, add, I actually added half of this uh, sour cream and cream cheese mix before I came on live with you all. I already blended it in just to get things going. You don't have to, you can just do yours all at once, okay? All right, so let's mix this in. And I'm just using a blender. You could use, hey, what's up, Julianne? Oh, cool. Um, you could use a whisk. You're just gonna get a workout on your arm if you use a whisk. This is just the old school. Oh, you see how this is getting so creamy? I'm gonna hold this up in just a second so you guys can see it. Oh my goodness, it's just luscious. It's creamy. And this is just going to make a delicious casserole. And mix that in. I'm just gonna give it another stir with my spatula. I love to cook with a spat spatula. What's your favorite cooking utensil? I love spatulas, y'all. I must have a, I'm not even gonna say. I love spatulas. All right, so mix that in. 
And then you want to add in some cheese. I have all of the cheese that I'm going to put in this dish here. Use the cheese of your choice. Y'all know mama like is spicy, so I'm putting in a spicy um, jalapeno Monterey Jack jalapeno cheese plus a little cheddar cheese. So save some of this to sprinkle on the top of the casserole. Don't put it all in the body. All right, so I'm just going to put about a third in here. Fold that in by hand. Let me, let me get the rest of my potatoes off of my... Yes! I don't need that anymore. Okay, now fold in your cheese. Fold it in. Now, I made... Oh gosh, I wish I had counted. I've been doing these meal prep videos since the beginning of the year. And I don't know how many meals and dishes I made... But this is the first time I've made a potato-based dish. Sometimes when you're eating vegetarian or vegan or just you just want to eat a little healthier, you want to have more vegetables, sometimes we will go to the potatoes, right? Particularly the white potatoes. Like you, you're not going to eat meat. You want something filling. And sometimes people are so concerned, like, oh, my God, I don't want all those carbs. But again, this is the first time, and this is the second, uh, well, the beginning of the second week of February, that I'm making a potato-based dish. The, I think the, 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 the trick is to mix things up. Look at those dishes that I made previously in the week, and you will realize you do not have to. I'm going to add just a little granulated garlic here, too. You will realize, hey, all right, all right, Beverly girl, yes. You will realize you do not have to eat the same thing. And I jokingly pick on skinless chicken, and I say, you don't have to just eat skinless chicken, y'all, <laughs> but I really do mean that. And you don't have to eat potatoes every week. You can eat a variety of really delicious food uh, every week. I also have some vegetable broth here that I use to cook my white beans. I cook my white beans in vegetable, vegetable broth. I'm going to use the white beans to make a spicy white bean dip. So I pour some of that liquid off not to waste it because this is all flavor. So if you want to add a little more creaminess, to this you can just add some of that vegetable broth or if you just have water if you want to use milk you can do that i don't use a lot of milk products um but again this is cheese so i am using that all right uh next up i got a handful of parsley here i'm just going to mince this up parsley is an underrated herb <laughs> it adds so much this is actually italian parsley it adds so much flavor to any dish. I'm a huge fan of fresh herbs. All right. Okay, let's get this. This is my latest cool thing that I bought myself to cook with. Don't you just love how it goes? And you just scoop everything up. Okay, if y'all don't love it, I love it. Well, <laughs> I do. I love it so much. I look for any chance to use it. Okay, so we've got our parsley in here. Fold that in. That gives us some uh, another color variety in our dish. Now, as I'm going to fill the cast iron skillet with this, let me show you what I did with the, remember these were baked potatoes first. So I took the skins, didn't throw them away after I peeled them off, and chopped them and minced them. These are the baked potato skins. Put a little olive oil in a pan, cast iron of course, because that's what I love to cook with, and crisp, made them crispy. Kind of like, you know, when you go out or you go to somewhere to watch a game or you're going out and you have the potato skins appetizer, that's the idea here. You're going to crisp these up and then you're going to put these on the top of the mashed potato casserole. Yes, I'm hyped about that, right? So we've got all of our ingredients here. Let me make sure I didn't leave anything out. I folded in, blah, 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 blah. I got everything in there. Boom. Here we go. I'm going to cook this in a 350 degree oven, okay, and it's going to be the bomb. So you're going to just take your mashed potato mix, put it in, whoo, that's heavy, put it in here. Now, if you have some of this left, it doesn't all fit, you, that's okay. You can take what you have left and freeze it, and you can make like potato fritters for breakfast, little patties. Um, you could cook them in the air fryer with a little olive oil, or you could cook them on the stove. There's more than one thing you could do with this. But I think all of this is going to fit in this pan. Yes. Yummy. Now, I make 
I'm making this because I'm making it as a make-ahead meal, meaning I'm going to eat this more than one time. What I don't eat, I generally put in the freezer, okay? So we're going to just spread this around, lovely. Get it all here. Take your crispy potato skins, and we're going to sprinkle them on the top. Oh, it smells delicious. Put your potato skins on the top. Your oven is already heated and ready to go. Boom, boom. Get your cheese that you had some left, remember? Sprinkle that over the top. Yeah, yeah, you already know it's about to be the bomb, right? You can already tell. You're like, oh my God. Oh my goodness. That's going to be so delicious. Let me hold it up so y'all can see. Spread your cheese around. You got your crispy potatoes. Uh, potato skins already crisp. Crisp. You don't want to over crisp them, meaning you don't want them to be crunchy because you they are they are going to crisp up in the oven. All right, this is ready to go. Let's get the oven open, and I'm gonna put this in the middle rack, and that's going to cook for about 30 minutes. But you want to check it, right? On to dish number two. We moving and grooving today, y'all. Moving and grooving today. The next up is I'm making a roasted broccoli with lemon pepper. So I have my well-seasoned pan. Don't y'all laugh at my pan. I say this every episode. This got all the good seasoning on it. So you want a uh, half uh, cookie sheet, uh, yeah, a cookie sheet, a half sheet. And I just sprayed it with some avocado oil. If you don't have oil in a spray can, you can make your own oil in a spray can with a spray bottle, but I bought this. Or you could just put some olive oil on the pan and spread it out, okay? So I like to use the stalk of the broccoli. A lot of times folks will cut off and only use the broccoli crown, but the stalk of the broccoli can be cut thin. That way it'll cook nice and tender and you get extra, you know, who's throwing away money, right? But I would say cut off the first inch of the stalk at the bottom you know, when you buy the broccoli, don't just buy the crowns. So, hold the broccoli here, and I'm just going to show you to slice that stalk off. That way, I'm going to be able to have this as part of my meal. And then for your, your crowns, you're just going to cut them loosely. You don't want them fine. Just cut them loosely. Give them a little body. I already cut the rest of them, so they're already in this bowl. So we have a nice, lovely bowl of our cut up broccoli. Now we're gonna make our dressing that we're gonna pour over the top of the broccoli. I have a third a cup of olive oil here. I have uh, five cloves of minced garlic. And then I have the zest of one lemon. I'm actually gonna show you how to zest. And I have the juice of one lemon in this bowl. Pour this all in here. To zest the lemon is super easy, orange lemon, whatever. This standing uh, grater is cool because you have the zest uh, side here. You just take your lemon and you go down. Don't go up, go down this way. And you just want to peel off. I don't even know if you can see that. But anyway, you get this. Yeah, I think you can see that. I got some broccoli mixed in there. But you get that zest of a lemon. And oh my God, it's so pungent. And it's just so fragrant. It just elevates the flavor and the scent and the aroma of any dish. So in this bowl, again, I got my lemon, I got my zest, I got my garlic cloves. I want a teaspoon of, y'all know mama like it spicy. Red pepper, <laughs> red pepper flakes, a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I don't know why I have to say it with all that extra drama, mama like it spicy, but that's really what I'm saying. And what's funny is um, I talk to myself a lot when I am cooking. I'm talking out loud. I live alone. So I'm always saying, go girl, get it girl. You know you like it spicy. I can't be alone. Is anybody else hype themselves up when they're cooking? I hype myself up when I'm cooking, when I'm working out, when I'm designing a room. Like, I'm my own best hype girl. I say that all the time, but I mean it. I really am. Do you, do you, are you saying, don't be shamed. Go ahead, out yourself. Let me know. Do you hype yourself up when you're cooking? You, you have to sometimes. So we're gonna add some rosemary here. Again, fresh rosemary, 
loose chop, rough chop it. Doesn't have to be super fine, but you don't want big, big hunks. Because uh, rosemary, fresh rosemary is kind of large. Okay, all right. Where's my favorite? My favorite little tool. Oh, I just love this, y'all. Go on, get y'all one. Go ahead, get yourself one of these. I don't even know what it's called. I just called it the scooper. Okay, so we got our rosemary. We want some salt and some pepper. Half a teaspoon of salt. Y'all don't ever uh, measure the salt over the uh, over the bowl you want to pour it in. Ask me how I know because if you if you over pour, it messes up what you've been working on. And then we want also a half a speed, half a teaspoon of pepper. Half a teaspoon of pepper. Get your little whisk. Whisk that around. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Woo! I love to cook with my nose. Y'all cook with your nose too. When it smells good. You know it's ready. All right, so now we're going to just take the bowl of broccoli and where's my spatula? Oh, let me get a new one. I told y'all I love spatulas. Here, go a different one. Pour this over the broccoli in the bowl. And then we're gonna toss this all around. And this, bro this broccoli dish is ready to go in the oven. Yeah. Now, if you don't want a lot of spice on yours, don't put that much. If you wanted a little less salt, do a little less salt. If you want a little more lemon and rosemary, do it. What am I getting at here, y'all? Customize it. When I'm designing a home, I always say we can do it the custom on a budget way. And really, it's the same way with your food. That's the beauty of cooking for yourself. You can customize it, custom on a budget. And nowadays, with the price of eggs, mm, let me tell y'all, mm, you better be trying to get some budget in your budget. <laughs> okay, so... Woo, this smells so good. Pour this right on the pan, right? Scrape out everything, don't leave anything in there, y'all. Come on, that's why that spatula is the bomb. Get all that good juice out and on. There we go. Spread it out, shake it away. This is ready for the oven, ha. Huh? We're gonna put this on the top. Woo, yes. Gotta love it. Two dishes already in. Third dish, here we go. I'm making a jerk jackfruit. And I made a um, spaghetti squash last evening. I baked it in the oven. And this is the spaghetti squash, if you've never seen it. Why is it called spaghetti squash? Well, because, I don't know if you've ever even sort of worked with one. When you peel the flesh away from the cooked, uh, cooked outer shell, you get this kind of string-like or spaghetti-like uh, vegetable. Now, does it taste like spaghetti? Of course not, because it's not pasta. But it is so delicious, and it retains its uh, texture when you mix other things with it. And so I'm going to have, um, I cooked this with some olive oil, rosemary, of course, fresh garlic and some thyme in the middle and just spread that and a little salt and pepper. And so this is really already ready to go. So now I just need to cook the jackfruit. The jackfruit, I'm actually mixed some jackfruit and chickpeas here. Chickpeas have so much wonderful protein and I love the texture of a chickpea. Some people don't like it. Again, do it to your own. You could do this with jackfruit, jackfruit and cauliflower. You could just do jackfruit. You could just do cauliflower. <laughs> so there's so much versatility with eating either vegan or vegetarian. I don't want you to think you, you know, you're eating like the same old thing. In fact, I did a video, I don't know, a couple days ago about one of my rules is um, no box, no bag. I really try to avoid buying things, not unless they're frozen, a frozen bag of fruit or something or frozen veggies. That's different. When I say no back, box, no bag, I mean like boxes of pre-processed whatever, vegetarian or gluten-free. I try to stay away from that. So I already um, marinated this overnight with my own jerk marinade that I made probably two weeks ago and I put what I had left in the freezer because I knew I was gonna make this dish. So that means that I am planning my meals ahead probably at least two weeks. That's why I mixed up that uh, Brussels sprouts dish thinking I was making it today, but it's on the menu for next week. So, um, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine and she was saying that she and her husband are just, they were struggling because they're both very busy, they work hard and so on and so forth. 
and I was giving her some tips and she let me know the other day that she implemented one of the tips and she said her husband love it not not loves it but love it like with that deep love it okay it saved time and that tip is doing what I call salad bags let y'all remind me if I don't I want to come back to that because I want I want to get on this jerk dish now before before y'all came on with me I already cooked up my poblano peppers now I'm using peppers that I love poblano peppers scallions red onion uh green yellow and orange pepper and i think i named them all oh and some garlic fr fresh garlic that's already cooked down and ready to go here okay so i'm going to turn the heat on back on because we're going to add our jerk and then I'm, i like to make a jerk sauce okay oh goodness this is a can of tomato paste three cans of water uh, maple syrup, about four to five tablespoons of maple syrup, chili powder, cumin, garlic, and of course, chili, uh, red, uh, chili pepper, chili flakes, and oh, Thai chili. Hot, because I like it spicy. I do, I do. Thai chilies, and there's a little fresh thyme in there. So really, um, oh, I forgot. I also add the hickory smoke to this, because, you know, traditionally, jerk is uh, um, cooked, like if you're in chicken or whatever meat, it's cooked on the grill. And so that smoked flavor is something that I wanted in this uh, vegan version of a jerk chicken, jerk chicken, jerk jackfruit. So I used the hickory uh, liquid smoke in this. Um, I marinated it with the liquid smoke, and I added also some of that liquid smoke to my sauce. So in my pan, that's I just turned the heat back on. This is two cans of um, uh, jackfruit and one can of chickpeas. I'm making a lot because these are repeatable meals for me throughout the week. And what I don't eat, I will freeze. I might eat this and make like um, jerk jackfruit uh, tacos or something to eat for breakfast. So there's so much versatility. All right, I hear the pan talking to me. So I'm just going to pour this all in there. Boom, tick, boom, boom, tick, boom. Y'all, how y'all doing over there? Are y'all taking notes, getting ideas? Again, you don't have to make the exact dish I'm making. You can say, oh, that gives me a great idea. I could make boom, boom, or X, Y, Z. What are y'all thinking? All right. So the beauty of, the beauty of cooking with vegetables versus meat um, it doesn't take as long, right? But you can still slow cook or stew, if you will, uh, a vegetable. So I am going to slower cook this. I'm starting it on a high heat just to kind of get that sear going. And then I'm going to turn it down. That'll take about 10-ish minutes. Then I'm going to add my jerk sauce. And then I'm going to turn it down low and slow and let that baby just cook and marinate. And all the goodness is going to go in there. So... As that is getting ready, I'm going to move to the very last dish. Yep. It moves a little quicker when I'm not doing a cook-along. So the very last dish, let me clean up a little bit. Um, before I tell you all about the very last dish, let me tell you why I never do recipes with uh, mushrooms. You see all the cool videos. I know y'all have seen them where the people are, you know, taking the fried oyster mushroom and peeling it apart and say, oh, this is just like chicken or whatever, you know, and it does look de delicious. It looks appealing. It looks appetizing. It's not because I don't eat fried food. It's because I am allergic to mushrooms. So you'll never see me add mushrooms to a dish or anything. And so please forgive me for those of you who think I came here to get a fried mushroom recipe, you know, a vegan or what have you, a vegetarian. I can't do it. Literally anaphylactic. Your girl would be bloop, out. Okay. Um, so I wish I could eat them. I truly do. But, but I don't, um, I can't. So, um, I'd be happy to share videos that I do find that I think look, I can't tell you how they taste, but I can tell you they might look really good and you should probably try them out. Um, I wish I could honestly. All right. The last dish I am going to make is a spicy white bean dip that I'm actually going to have for breakfast. I also have the philosophy, you all, of mix it up. I think folk get bored. I know I used to get bored eating the same thing every day or like my breakfast food, thinking, okay, you know, oatmeal, pancakes, waffles, whatever, that's breakfast. 
Uh, wah, wah. So, gosh, last week, this week past, I had butternut squash soup for breakfast with a, a half an apple and some of my homemade granola on the side. Um, I can't even think of what I had the week before, but the point is, mix it up. Give yourself permission to have lots of awesome variety in your food life, okay? Now, these are the white beans. Let me get my recipe up. Let me get my recipe up. I love creating recipes. Uh, folks ask me, well, where do you get your recipes from? Sometimes I'm looking up something or I see something and I think, hmm, how can I, I don't want to say make it better, but make it different. Yeah, that's it. How can I make it? Yes, yes, Catherine. Oh, child, listen. You don't even, I, twice I have been hospitalized mistakenly ingesting <laughs> mushrooms, so uh, it's not pretty. And it's, it's something that I just have to be very, very conscious of. Um, so mix it up. So this white bean casserole, uh, not casserole, this is a spicy white bean dip that I'm going to have with, uh, uh, you can have fresh vegetables with it, but I, the way I'm going to eat it with my breakfast is I'm going to have this dip with some air fried carrot strips and some air fried zucchini chunks. That's going to be my breakfast. And I'll probably have an orange along with that. So um, these are the white beans that I cooked up. Um, I let them soak for a couple of hours yesterday and then I just put them on the stove while I was building a fire and watching a movie and everything because I knew that I wanted to make this dip. You can buy some canned white beans, y'all. It's not like, you know, I, I just believe in making my stuff really homemade, um, but you can just buy the canned beans and, and go for it. You don't, you know, you don't have to go to the steps that I do all the time. So this spicy white bean Spicy white bean dip has, uh, let's see, it, well, I'm not going to go through what I put, because I put this in the recipe. I'm not going to tell y'all everything I put in my pot of beans to cook them. But ahead of time, I did stir up some poblano peppers, uh, which is a Mexican pepper, and this has three cloves of garlic, uh, some chopped Thai chilies, because I want it to be spicy, and uh, a red onion, and I cooked this on the stove to cook it down. So this isn't going to take long to mix up, actually. So this is, I'm just going to put three cups of the bean. And so if you're using a can, you probably use uh, two cans or, yeah, two cans will probably be, be enough. Two cups here. Boom. Add all of the pepper, whatever you mixed for your peppers, put it in here. Again, if you don't like what I've said, don't use those peppers. Use the ones that you're going to enjoy the most. Okay, put this in your food processor. And then you're going to also add uh, a quarter cup of olive oil. No, oh, olive oil a little here. Okay, that's cooking away. I don't want things to burn here. Okay, quarter cup of olive oil. Quarter cup. Boom. Quarter cup of olive oil. And then we're going to add some tahini. Tahini is the um, basically the peanut butter of sesame sesame seeds. So we're going to add a tahini to this dish or to this dip to mix it up. And it's just going to add another flavor prof profile and give us that additional creamy factor. The beans are going to cook up, uh, mix up creamy anyway. And a teaspoon of lemon juice. Oh, I put my lemon juice away. Teaspoon of lemon juice. And add that. Ooh. Almost a teaspoon. Almost. Almost. Teaspoon of lemon juice. And I think I got everything. Yep. That's everything. Now, I also have my leftover juice from when I cooked the beans. And again, this is just, I cooked the beans in vegetable broth with water. So um, I use the box vegetable broth so I don't know how many cups is in there but you know just enough to cover everything well all right so we're gonna food process this and you may need to add some vegetable broth in here and uh, and oh I forgot salt gotta have salt gotta have salt I'm gonna start with a half a teaspoon you can add some more if you need it all right do you guys use a food processor? Let me know in the comments below. Here we go. It's kind of loud. All right, 
So it's not yet all the way mixed, but I just want to show you all how quick this goes. So we already have that. I mean, it's just super, super creamy and delicious. Woo, smells lovely. All right, so I'm going to add just a little of my leftover vegetable broth. Probably about a quarter of a cup. Y'all use them? Uh, did y'all say y'all use them? Uh, do you use a vegetable food processor? Oh, you use a ninja. Ah, how's the ninja? You know how you have your favorite products. Like for my blender, I'm a diehard Vitamix, all the way live. I guess I'm a Vitamix snob. <laughs> all right. Mix. Oh yeah. sinful how lovely this is turning out okay so let's move all of our stuff is out of the way move this over here because that's where this is going next oh my goodness the speed of the um it's the speed of, of the food processor that gets it for me so I've made a little display just to show you all kind of how this can work, okay? I got my vegetables here. Now, I've not cut them because I'm going to eat them this way in the morning of, but I also added some of these lovely gluten-free crackers. I'll hold this whole tray up in just a moment. This is a spicy white bean dip that you can have for breakfast. Yep. Not for a party. I mean, you could have it for a party, but you could also just eat this lo loveliness for breakfast. Let me give it a little, a little topping with some parsley on the top. Okay. Boom. There you go. Spicy white bean dip. You can have it with fresh vegetables. You can have it with crackers. I happen to have sweet potato gluten-free crackers from Costco because, of course, I'm gluten-free. Delicious and yummy. Let me hold the dip up so you can maybe see it with a little more detail. Again, food should be a party in your mouth. It should look lovely. It should smell absolutely phenomenal. And it should taste outstanding. All right, let me check on this jerk. Oh yeah, it's cooking up y'all. Okay, okay. Oh, I wish y'all could smell it in here. All right, so that's just about 10 minutes. Let me see if I could bring a piece of this jerk over here, this jackfruit, so you can see what I mean. See how it has that coloring or caramelization on it? That's what you want when I say cook it so it sears. Oh, it's just, it's absolutely phenomenal. You want that sear on it. Okay, now I'm gonna stir this. Now, actually, let me bring the whole pan over there so you can see it. Oh yeah, it's about to be a party in our mouth, y'all. Party in our mouth. All right. This is my, this is my largest, <laughs> my largest uh, cast iron skillet, which I use a lot. So this is the jerk jackfruit with the chickpeas and um, the onion mixture that I, that I already pre-made. So now I'm going to add the sauce and put it back on the and put it back on the stove. Okay. Woo! Did y'all hear that? Another spatula. Cause you know I don't want to leave not a crumb of the goodness. Okay. I love also uh, what I call the sweet heat or the spicy. So I'm always going to add um, something sweet to balance out when I do something that's quite spicy. And in here, I use um, maple syrup for that. Okay. So now we're going to turn this on low and slow. All right. And let this simmer away. All right. And this can be eaten so many ways. 
there? Oh, right here. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Back on film. Let me check on our mashed potato casserole. Oh, it's coming along. It's not done, but I'm just taking it out so you can see it. It's not done, but you see how our cheese is starting to melt and those crispy potato skins on the top are going to get even crispier. So let's put this back in. And our roasted broccoli, I'm just gonna give this a stir. It's not quite done yet. I wanted to have a little more char on it. It's almost there, really this only needs about probably two or three more minutes. It smells divine, absolutely divine. Truly divine. Yes, really just two, more, two or three more minutes for this and this is gonna be done. So that are, that's all the dishes, everyone. I put together the smoky mashed potato casserole with crispy potato skins on top. I also made the um, jerk and chickpea jackfruit. I also made the roasted broccoli with lemon pepper sauce, and then this phenomenal spicy white bean dip that you guys can have for breakfast. Again, you can have any of these dishes for breakfast. You don't have to have the traditional breakfast food for breakfast. Honestly, I might decide I'm gonna have the jackfruit for breakfast one day. I might have the, um, I might have the broccoli for breakfast one day. It just depends, my idea, my philosophy is mix it up, make it phenomenal, make it what you have a taste for in a given week. If you guys have any questions, you can drop them below. All the dishes that I've made, I'm gonna share the finished pictures of because they, they have to cook, right? Those things have to stay in the oven for a bit there. I'm gonna share, show you the finished pictures of. We have our dip here all ready to go. So that one is something that I can show you. Oh, oh, you're, oh, you're welcome. I'm so happy, uh, Rev, Rev, Rev. If you make any of the dishes, please tag me. Uh, on, uh, on my cook-along last week, um, a sister friend made three of the dishes from the cook-along and she kept tagging me and her friends were saying how delicious everything looked. And she kept saying, it was really a party in your mouth. So that gave me so much joy, made me so happy to help someone sort of break out and break free and realize that you, you know you can make delicious food. It doesn't have to take forever. It's just a tiny bit of prep, tiny, but you're worth it. You, you're, you, you deserve it. You deserve that same energy that you put into say a job. You deserve to put that kind of energy, self-love care into yourself. Thank you all so much for joining me for the repeatable eatable meal prep episode. And I'm happy that you're joining me for the Joyful Lifestyle by Design movement, where every month I give you a gentle nudge of something that you can do that pours self-love back to you. January was really the meal prep, meal prep month. February is movement is preventive medicine. Move that body, y'all. Remember that home decorating show where they used to say, move that bus. Well, if you don't remember it, I remember it. Move that body. <laughs> That's what I'm saying for February. I'll let you know what we're doing in March when we get to March. I'll see y'all in the next video. Boom!